Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are taking the Radeon RX 580 along with the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB and we're benchmarking them in a shipload of games to see which one is faster in 2019. We first did this back in 2017 where we tested 27 games and we found the RX 580 to be 3% faster on average at 1080p. Then the following year, 2018, we retested with another 27 games, half of, well, half a dozen of which were new, not necessarily half of them, but anyway, half a dozen were new. And yeah, the GTX 1060 6GB came out 1% faster on average. Well, it was actually 3% faster technically. That's if you include Frostpunk, which was a massive outlier. Anyway, as I said earlier, it's 2019 now, and I'm still not really sure why I'm reminding you guys of the current year. I assume you know what year it is, so I'll just move along. So yeah, 12 months has passed since we made this comparison, so naturally we have another 27 game benchmark. Actually, you know what? I was kind of thinking I was pretty lazy in 2017. I kind of just let that carry over into 2018. I mean, 27 games, honestly. What was I doing with all my free time? So this year I've pulled my finger out. I've got serious about this comparison. And not only am I testing at two resolutions, 1080p and 1440p, so two resolutions this year, but I'm also testing with 38 games. I know what you're thinking. There is no way this video is gonna generate enough views to pay for that kind of investment. And you'd be right, which is why you're gonna sit there and enjoy today's sponsor spot. Okay, let's get into it. We're about to go over the results for a dozen of the newer or more popular titles, and then we'll check out some head-to-head -head comparisons with all 38 games and a few quick performance breakdown graphs. For detailed information regarding the performance of the other 26 games that we won't analyze, please check out our Patreon page for those graphs because they will be made available for free over there. Now, as usual, our Corsair GPU test rig built inside the Crystal Series 570X has been used. And inside we have a Core i9 9900K clocked at 5 GHz with 32 GB of DDR4 3400 memory. Representing the green team is the Gigabyte Aorus GTX 1060 6GB, and for the red team the Gigabyte Aorus RX 580 XTR 8GB. The latest available display drivers at the time of testing have been used, and all results have been updated with the latest drivers. I think that's about everything, let's get to the good stuff. Well would you look at that, we're kicking things off with a brand new game, Rage 2. For those of you unaware, Rage 2 uses the Avalanche Studios Apex game engine in favor of id Tech, but it still uses the Vulkan API exclusively. This is good news for AMD as it allows the game to make full use of the Radeon RX 580 and as a result it was 13% faster than the GeForce GTX 1060 at 1080p. Moving on, Nvidia recently addressed their poor World War Z performance when using the Vulkan API, so now GeForce GPUs deliver the same level of performance regardless of the API used. Unfortunately though, this does do little to help the GeForce GTX 1060 in its battle with the Radeon RX 580, as here the AMD GPU was 31% faster at 1080p. Moving on, the Radeon RX 580 also gets the better of the GeForce GPU and Apex Legends. Here it was 6% faster at 1080p and 9% faster at 1440p. The 1% low performance was also quite a bit stronger, 11% better at 1080p and 13% at 1440p. So overall, the RX 580 is the better choice for Apex fans. Then of course we have to include the Division 2 and this is another comfortable win for the Radeon GPU. That said, at 1080p, while it was 17% faster on average, the 1% low performance was rather comparable. Still, this is a strong title for AMD and a clear win for the RX 580. Frame time performance, which we convert to a 1% low metric, is similar in Shadow of the Tomb Raider using either GPU. However, it's the RX 580 that offers 14% more frames on average at 1080p and 21% more at 1440p. Now, no surprises here, Assassin's Creed Odyssey might be an AMD sponsored title, but Nvidia's DNA was embedded in this series well before the red team started throwing money at the developer. Try as they might, no amount of driver optimization will set this one straight. Here the GTX 1060 6GB was still 19% faster at 1080p and 14% faster at 1440p, so pretty easy win here for Nvidia. Now, despite using DirectX 11, Resident Evil 2 heavily favours the RX 580. Quite shockingly, it was 26% faster than the GTX 1060 at both tested resolutions. This also means that the 580 is a viable option at 1440p, whereas the 1060 was really less than ideal. I know it doesn't really look like it, but AMD has made a decent step forward in Fortnite over the past few months. 
but despite some driver improvements, the GeForce GTX 1060 is still 20% faster at 1080p. That margin is reduced to 15% at 1440p, but still this is very clearly a win for the green team. Despite being an NVIDIA sponsored title, the RX 580 is faster than the GTX 1060 and Metro Exodus, though only by a slim margin at 1440p. That said, it was also just 6% faster on average at 1080p, but 16% faster when looking at the 1% low performance. Rainbow Six Siege has always played better with the RX 580, so nothing has really changed here. The Radeon GPU offered around 15% more performance, and again, that difference is really noticeable for those who are playing at 1440p. Then we see that the Radeon GPU is the clear winner in our Battlefield 5 benchmark, beating the GTX 1060 by a 13% margin at 1080p. The margin for the 1% low result is much smaller, but overall the RX 580 was the superior GPU in this test. Unlike Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry New Dawn is an AMD sponsored title where the RX 580 doesn't get trounced. In fact, here, the RX 580 is the one doing the trouncing, beating the GTX 1060 by an 8% margin at 1080p while delivering considerably better 1% low performance. Okay, so that's how they compare in a dozen of the newer or more popular tiles that we test with, but now it's time to see how they compare head to head with the other 26 games that I also tested with included as well. We've seen a bit of back and forth between the RX 580 and GTX 1060 over the years, and well, that looks to continue here. In last year's test, the 1060 was on average 3% faster, but in 2019, it's now 2% slower. That said, we do deem anything under a 5% margin to be a tie. So as I said back in 2017, there's really no wrong option here. Then for those of you gaming at 1440p, the RX 580 is a slightly better option again, and despite a big loss in Ace Combat 7, it was overall the more consistent performer. The 1060 was slower by a 5% margin or greater in 14 of the games tested, while it was only faster by a 5% margin or greater in 7 of the games tested. So once again, it really depends on the games you play to determine which one is the best choice for you. And last time I made this comparison, I pretty much concluded by saying there was no right or wrong choice. It's really simply too close to call, so get whichever one is cheapest, and I think that's still the way to go today. That said, the GTX 1060 is now an outgoing product as it's been replaced by the GTX 1660 and well, the 1660 Ti if you've got a bit more cash to spend. So paying even $200 for a six gigabyte GTX 1060 is no longer advisable given that the 1660 costs just 10% more and on average it's around 15% faster and it's a little more fuel efficient. On the other hand, the RX 588 gigabyte is selling for as little as $180. So at that price, it is certainly worth considering but anything above $190 US and I'd say you're better off with the GTX 1660. And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to hit the like button for us. That's much appreciated. And if you'd like to see more content from us, then well, make sure you subscribe. The little alarm bell thing's ticked and that way you can get the notifications and be in the draw to type first because, you know, that's always a lot of fun. Uh, and also you can support us directly on Patreon and get access to our exclusive Discord server, our monthly live streams when I go and get together with Tim and we answer your questions and talk about whatever's interesting at the time. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>